acceptance, tolerance, adaptability, compassion, empathy are the qualities which have been engraved in us right when we choose to become doctors and took the Hippocratic Oath, which, which binds us not just to the patients, our colleagues, and our profession, but to the humanity as a whole. I'd like to take a minute to appreciate the noble work done by API during the COVID crisis uh, for, the follow, uh, for, the, for the fellow India, uh, countrymen of India, providing oxygen concentrators, ventilators, high flow oxygen equipments, PPEs, medications, and uh, a fund to the PM Relief Fund, and uh, tele teleprescriptions, and whatnot. A huge round of applause for API. <laughs> It is so welcoming to see all the goals set by RP for India. Thank you, RP, for your commitment and contributions. And I must say, Indian healthcare industry has crossed many milestones by now. Uh, the recent National Family Health Survey and, of course, the Niti Aayog Health Index are definitely a proof to it, with the total fertility rate coming down to 2.0, which is less than the replacement level, with decrease of infant and maternal mortality rate and initiatives taken by government and, of course, the vaccination drives. But there's a lot for us to do to become the global healthcare leaders. As a young medical graduate, allow me a minute to, to take my views on the current ongoings. Number one being the, short, uh, you know, being the shortage of doctors and the huge demand and supply gap. Uh, I guess it'll take like, uh, by 2030, we would need 20, 20 lakh more doctors as all, all the uh, you know, elderly doctors and senior doctors have been mentioning. And of course, the gap, you know, the postponements, the continuous postponements of NEET PG and UG has created a huge gap with one, one academic year, with the loss of one academic year for one, one batch, and of course another batch being overworked up, doing more than 100 hours of COVID duties. And of course the cost of medical education, which is too high for the people in the rural background. I mean, I keep going to a lot of schools and colleges and for, for, for a lot of motivational talks, and I hear people saying, I mean, they want to be, they really have the passion, the firing desire to do something great in their life. But unfortunately, uh, a few of these pointers which you know stop them from getting into post graduation you know either we have to get a top rank or have a reservation or you know be born to rich parents or you know compromise on your branch so this has been happening since a while and uh, despite financial hardships a lot of youngsters of india they prefer studying overseas as you know uh, for for the sake not for the sake of money but for the sake of better expertise and um, and of course, the violence against doctors, which is high right now. And we need more uh, research-oriented programs and fellowships, more of them, which, you know, in the US, which, which some of the fellowships which, are, which we are not even aware of here. But let me tell you, with necessary changes made, we, the youth, are ready to, you know, contribute our best to the nation. And I'm sure with, uh, you know, with amazing doctors like y'all and we youngsters and RP coming forward and the government coming forward, we are sure to see India as the number one healthcare leader in the coming days. On a lighter note, prevention is better than cure is the topic of this summit. Right? So we know that screening and early diagnosis are definitely uh, doing great, but primordial and primary preventive measures and lifestyle changes are definitely uh, are great steps towards you know, uh, stopping the non-communicable diseases, be it diabetes or heart disease or hypertension or any of it. I have a question for all of y'all. How many of y'all are into fitness? Any kind of fitness, walking, you know, yoga, anything, swimming, that is great, that is wonderful. Wonderful to see so many doctors being fit because it is, it is only when doctors are fit that patients would be inspired to be more fit, right? It, it is so nice to see us uh, looking, you know, looking uh, smart in front of our patients. And of course, as doctors, we get to stand eight to 10 hours a day, and we need strong back and strong leg to be standing for so many hours a day. So it is extremely important that we keep ourselves fit, right? And um, we, keep, we, we keep talking about diet, nutrition, and fitness, but how many of us make time for our own selves is important here, because you doctors are the most precious people of our society who are, you know, who, who would be treating millions of patients. So if you don't take care of yourself, then who will take care of the patients, right? So, 
Self-care, self-love, making time for yourself, for your own self, and being your own doctor is definitely the need of the hour right now. At least 10 to 20 minutes a day. I'm sure that's not a lot for us. We can definitely make more, you know, more than that, actually. Uh, creating a 10 to 20 minute capsule of exercises for all of us to, to stay fit. And, you know, we all know this fact that health is wealth. And, of course, you know, the WHO, I mean, I'm a yoga practitioner, uh, a certified yoga practitioner and trainer uh, who's been training so many students and the police academies in a lot of places. And what I realized while doing yoga is that it, it, deals not, not just with, it deals not just with the physical aspects, but also with the mental, physical, emotional, and psychological aspects, which perfectly fits into the WHO definition of health, which says health is physical, mental, emotional, and psychological well-being and not merely absence of disease or illness. Introducing yoga or any sort of physical activity into the, uh, you know, right from the childhood will develop a lifestyle habit and prevent them from having non-communicable diseases in their future. Not just that, it is also proved that waking up early in the morning and doing your exercises early in the morning has proved that those students are more productive and attentive. And of course, we would definitely want to look smart and more impressive and attractive, isn't it? Yes. Okay, let's keep our profession aside for a while. And uh, let's talk about, I'm, I'm sure, behind your white coats, most of you all are incredibly talented. Am I right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> how, many, how many singers in the house? Wow, I see a lot of hands up. At least, like, bathroom singers, if you are. <laughs> how many singers here? All are bathroom singers. Are bathroom singers. Okay, how many dancers? Wow, I see a lot of hands up, right? So, hence proved that you all are incredibly talented behind your white coats. I'm, here, I'm called here to give a motivational talk, but I seem too young to, to motivate all of you all, but I think this is one of the points I really want to concentrate on, that I see amazing people, you know, you could be swimmers, singers, dancers, poets, photographers, actors, bikers, and travelers, and what not. Why should profession career, you know, career and our passion be an either or or option. All of us, you know, here are doctors who are specialized into different fields, but what makes us unique is that balance, to be able to balance our passion and profession. You know, balancing your work and family, you know, it is as important as balancing your passion and profession. So, you know, balancing my profession and passion, uh, I mean, I have been doing that for so many years so far, and I realized that passion helps us vent out our stress. Passion helps us in times of crisis, and passion makes life more beautiful than mechanized. I've been a Bharatanatyam artist and given over 2,000, 2000 performances for the past 20 years I've been performing. And I realized that it keeps me happy. It gives me joy, it keeps me going, and it is my companion during my hardships. And as ma'am mentioned, I've had this opportunity of performing in front of numerous legends, and uh, one of my favorite being Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, sir. So during one of the conferences, uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, sir, has been to my college, and it was an OSMECON conference in 2013, and I got the opportunity to perform in front of him. And what he said on, on that day about, uh, you know, after seeing my performance is something which is like a message for my life and all of us as well. He said, when art and medicine join together, you create a good human being. Not only you can treat people, you can treat with compassion. I'm sure we all are compassionate doctors already, but I would definitely urge you all to, uh, to continue your, your, your passion as well. Make at least one, you know, a few hours out of your busy week, one day in a week. If you can, you know, make hours for your passion, then I think uh, it'll keep you happy. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna see a large difference after you do that. And we know the world is being digitalized right now. It is important to improve the digital presence of medical industry, and the beauty of technology is that it connects us to millions of people. A click of a button helps us connect to millions of people and give them the right medical information at the right time. And the next big thing that is going to happen, that is already happening, is our online clinics. 
but there are definitely pros and cons for everything. This, you know, uh, the pros we already know, but the, but, but the disadvantages being that, you know, some of the quacks may, may utilize this opportunity to give wrong information and wrong treatment, which I think with some kind of regulations from the government, we can, we can definitely curtail that. And I also remember Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam sir saying this, that uh, during the conference itself, he encouraged both medical students and engineers to collaborate together. And we have created a program called MedTech where both of them come together and exhibit their medical models. The engineers come forward and exhibit their medical models. Uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's a great and amazing initiative. Well, for us youngsters, I see some young people here, uh, online presence has a totally different meaning. For us, online presence means Instagram, Facebook, Right? Snap? So, <laughs> how many of you are youngsters are on Instagram? All of us, even I am on Instagram, right? And I, I'm sure like all, all the, uh, you know, senior doctors present here, we are all on Facebook. But I, I'd like to highlight that there is a difference. There is a huge difference between making your presence online, you know, uh, the difference between just browsing your social media and socializing, and you being the enlightening factor for people around you who are watching you online. There is a huge difference between both of these. All of us young, youngsters here, uh, you know, when it comes to online presence, I think it is important that we look beyond browsing the celebrity lives and become an inspiration by ourselves and, uh, you know, become a motivating factor for everybody who's watching you online, right? And to be able to be successful, the only key is to utilize your time properly and your opportunities properly to dream big, have a vision, and to execute that vision with a discipline and have a positive outlook towards your life, believe in the supreme power and believe in your own self. A lot of us see a lot of failures in life. Only when you know, only when you know how to overcome the biggest failure in your life, you would know how to sustain yourself. I was the All India's best kid of NCC honored by the Prime Minister and President of India. Being a doctor, being a Miss India, being a Bharatnatyam artist, a yoga practitioner, a philanthropist, an eco-activist, I can assure you that I have seen failures in every step of these achievements. I have failed once, I have failed twi twice and thrice. But, you know, waking up again the next day morning and having a new hope again is what made me stand again in front of you all. There is a difference between winning and being successful, okay? I never considered winning any of these competitions as being successful. For me, success is about, you know, waking up after you failed. For me, success is about uh, overcoming the challenges and societal norms, being disciplined, being consistent in your hard work, being happy with what you have and satisfied with what you have is success for me making my country proud, making my parents proud, and my teachers proud is success to me. I think we've seen this, uh, you know, a lot of times it, it's been forwarded on our, on our phones that the winner stands like this, and the person who got third will be celebrating the success, right? So that means that, you know, the position or winning is not success absolutely. Being happy with what you have and enjoying your journey and, you know, exploring yourself and being able to, you know, chase your passion is success to me. And at the end of our lives, there shouldn't be any point where you look back and say, I wish I had done that. There should be a point where, this, where, where you have to say that, I chased my passion and I did that. You know, but I must say this is just the beginning of my journey when, I, when I'm talking in front of legends like all of y'all. I, as I said, I grew up idealizing uh, doctors like y'all, amazing doctors like y'all and wanting to be like y'all. With all your blessings, uh, I promise to serve my nation with total dedication and responsibility. And, uh, and I must say, for all the youngsters here, the senior doctors would be passing on the torch to all of us. And I'm sure the torch is being placed, certainly placed in the right hands. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I am deeply grateful for RP for giving me this opportunity. Uh, and I must say that, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be standing in front of all of y'all. And uh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you.